Hi, everyone, and welcome back. We're going to continue with our bioinformatics with R video series with a workshop here on BLAST metagenomics. We're going to introduce this uh, conceptual workflow that works, uh, that's going to be similar to any metagenomic classification program. Uh, so we're going to take raw data from an early COVID patient, and we're going to use BLAST to find sequence matches to a database of known viral genomes. A couple things along the way for bioinformatics. Uh, we're going to parallelize this search. We can break up the BLAST search into chunks, and we can uh, speed up our search that way a little bit because we have access to a little bit more compute power. And then we will work on uh, visualizing our results so that you can see for yourselves uh, where most of our viral sequence matches are. All right, we're back here in our studio. Uh, we're going to start by loading all of the libraries that we're going to use for this workflow. All right, our BLAST, of course, is going to take care of our BLAST searches. Taxonomizer is going to give us the tools to look up the taxonomy for every accession in our BLAST hit uh, data. And then uh, Parallel is going to help us speed this up and ggplot and forecats to visualize. Next up, we're going to have to set up our workspace. Uh, to do this, I'm going to create a new folder that I'm going to call metagenomics. You can call it whatever you like. And I'm going to set WD to move into that metagenomics folder. OK, I'm going to better run some of this before I forget. All right, inside of um, our metagenomics folder, I'm going to create two uh, subdirectories, uh, one for reference data and one for the raw data. Inside of our reference data, uh, we're going to need to run some code to download the viral sequence, the viral, viral genomic sequence data from the RefSeq NCBI database. I'm going to do that directly from the FTP server, which I will link to with this video. Uh, but there are three files we're going to get here, and we will uh, unzip those and concatenate them into one file for our BLAST database. All right, under the raw data, uh, and this is going to take a bit, minute longer. I'm going to download a data set from the NCBI SRA. Uh, this is one of many sequence data sets that was used to sequence the, uh, the first SARS-CoV-2 genome. This came from a uh, sequencing the RNA from a patient's lungs very early in the pandemic. Uh, this is just part of the data, the, the whole project data set is hundreds of gigabytes. We don't need all of it. Um, this one's about three gigabytes to download and eight gigabytes to unzip. The reference data do not take long to install here. I'm, yeah, we want to make that uh, called data, not raw here. Because of course I refer to the data folder later. Okay, while that's running, uh, I'm going to set up a couple of lines of code to read in the raw data once it's unzipped and set up the BLAST database. That will read in the query data, and now let's set up a BLAST database. All right, that should do it to set up the reference database. Uh, we'll also need to set our connection to the database, so we should do that here with the BLAST function db equals ref for where the reference file is. And our type here, we'll do BLAST in this time. And it looks like down here in the console, our raw data have downloaded and we're in the process of unzipping those. There we go. So we have unzipped the reference data. So let's go ahead and read that and make our BLAST database. Oh, yeah, I made a mistake up here. Uh, Right, our format needs to equal FASTQ in order to read FASTQ data. So it looks like the BLAST database was built appropriately. That is the output we like to see. Okay, while that's reading, we'll wanna take a look at that data object that we get in FQ uh, in a little bit once it's read. Um, but while that's getting set up, 
We're going to work on our code down here for running Blast in parallel. This is, uh, oh, this is a little tricky if you've never done any parallel programming before, but there is a handy set of tools in the R library parallel that is going to make this fairly straightforward. Um, so we're going to we're going to have to uh, we're going to choose here to use the uh, apply family of functions in their parallel form. Uh, in, with the parallel package here to uh, to run a function across the across a cluster of R sessions that we're going to make here in a minute. Uh, so we're going to need to wrap our predict function that we normally use to search for blast matches into a function that takes only one argument. So we can use an L apply style call. Uh, and so this is going to be really simple. If you've never written an R function before, this is about as short as it gets. Uh, so our function, we pass in an object X, which is our uh, uh, some of our fast Q reads. And we're going to return the value that is given back by our blast predict function. And we're going to pass in the blast database and that X. So that's our function we're going to run. Now we need to set up the cluster. This is just uh, this is going to fork the R process that we're in to make uh, some number of daughter processes here. I'm going to use 16, but you should use what is appropriate for your system. This is not the most memory efficient parallelization, but it is effective. Next, we're going to use cluster split to split the FQ object. Let's take a look at that. Just do head FQ. Uh, yep, that looks good. So it's a DNA string set object, which is what we want for the blast searches. And uh, we have a bunch of 150 base pair data from, uh, it's just the, let's see, which one is this? Um, yeah, this is just the forward reads, right? Underscore one dot FQ from one of our samples. It's just a small fraction of our data. Uh, and let's see. There's, uh, let's see, 26 million reads in this data set. We could probably do with far fewer than that. We're going to take those 26 million reads and we're going to split those up using cluster split into 16 close to equal pieces. If it doesn't divide exactly by 16, it handles that for us. And uh, we're going to then send each of those splits. This just produces a list of objects made by splitting up FQ. Uh, we're going to pass those into par L apply here that will then run our uh, run our function, that par predict function we made above, across the whole cluster. So par L apply is just like L apply, but we have to first define a cluster that we're going to run it across. Then we'll pass in the list that we're going to iterate through, splits, and our function. All right, let's go ahead and run a couple of these so we can check our work so far. The function looks okay. We're setting up the cluster here, and it's now made 16 daughter R processes. Now we're going to split FQ. This will take another minute because FQ is very large. Oh, there it goes. Wow, we're doing good tonight. All right, well, now it's time to run par L apply across our cluster. So let's go ahead and get that started. And we will also need to, when that's done, run the function stop cluster on the cluster ob cluster object here. Uh, that's gonna that stop cluster is going to clean up after these jobs. It's always a good idea in my experience to make the cluster and stop the cluster after you do what you need to with it. It's not in my experience, very effective to keep reusing an open cluster, although it is possible to do. All right, while this is running, we can open up a terminal in our studio and run the top command, and we can watch these. It's been going about a minute, uh, and we should have now 16 blast in sessions running. This works for blast because the query for each sequence read is completely independent. So this is uh, kind of a naive parallelization. We don't really need to know what's happening in each of the BLAST searches. All we need to do is collect all the results. Uh, now is a good time to go uh, take a stretch break. Uh, I will fast forward through the next five minutes or so of computational time.
and we will regroup when blast is done. There we go. Looks like our blast job has finished. Yes, there it is. Uh, so stop cluster has run. We don't look at all of PCL, but there we've got 16 objects and the first one has a blast results table in it. Yes, it does. That's good. All right, so let's uh, see what we get here. We'll need to put these blast results back together. Um, PCL right now is a list because we use an lapply function here. Uh, dplyr or bind rows. This handles missing data really nicely. Put that all back together into a data frame. Let's. All right, so we've got uh, 950,000 hits. We didn't constrain our BLAST query at all. So it's going to be helpful here, just if you're following along at home. We're done being parallel now. We're running back to single core stuff because we don't have much left to do. Uh, so let's see, summary, CL. All right, so we've got percent identity between 73 and 100%. Alignment length, 28 to 173. So it's supposed to be 150 base pair of reads, we must have a few longer ones snuck in there. Uh, we'll probably want to constrain that to just the longer matches. Uh, doing so will probably reduce the total number of mismatches and gap openings. Uh, and uh, all right, so I'm going to try this with uh, a bit of filtering. Uh, so we're going to make a new object here, CL filt equals uh, equals CL, which CL rows we have the percent identity greater than or equal to 95% and the alignment length greater than or equal to, let's say, 140 base pairs and a comma because we're indexing on the rows. There we go. So we took our 980,000 hits down to 28,505 really good hits. Full length query matches to the reference data at 95% accuracy. I would say those are pretty good. OK, so now we're going to have to deal with the taxonomy. And I say deal with the taxonomy because the NCBI taxonomy is deep, uh, as all taxonomies are. Uh, this includes a database of all of the NCBI accessioned ID numbers. So every sequence in our virus database has an accession number. We have a bunch of those now in our CL filt object that we want to look up and see what organism, what virus those came from. And we'd also have to run a handy function called prepare database. So that function, uh, is, we're not actually dealing with a real, with an existing file with prepare database. It's just saying where to put the database. It will download everything that you need to query the succession database from the NCBI. Here, I've already prepared that database. Uh, and it is in a location that's adjacent to my metagenomics data or metagenomics folder that I made earlier. So db slash taxonomy. We run that and we've got our, our SQL files that were set up by running that prepare database function earlier. Okay, so we're just going to refer to that location here when we want to find our taxonomy. Uh, first off, we're going to list the files in that taxonomy folder. We're going to identify the one that starts with nodes, one that starts with names, and one that starts with accession taxa. The nodes and the names contain information about the hierarchical taxonomy. The accession taxa database will let us look up individual accession ID numbers. Uh, and associated taxon ID numbers. And those taxon ID numbers refer to places within the nodes and names database. And this will take another couple minutes to load the databases, but once databases are loaded, this is very quick. 
here we go. We've got our nodes and names and accession databases all ready. And now we can search for our last hit IDs. So the first thing up is to convert our accession IDs to a character vector. Uh, so this is the subject ID column in our BLAST database. Uh, then we're going to take those accession IDs and search them with our function from taxonomizer accession to taxa. And then uh, that's going to give us a taxon ID, a vector of taxon IDs for every accession number that we've searched. And now we're going to get a list. Uh, it's not actually a list, but we're going to get a table of all of the taxonomy for every one of those taxon IDs. This gives the whole hierarchy from uh, domain all the way down to species, depending on what your taxon ID is. Uh, then last but not least, we're going to attach that tax list table onto the end of uh, CL. Oh, yeah, we'll see. There we go. <laughs> CL filt. Let's rerun that. This will be really fast now because we already searched a million tax on your accession IDs. Uh, we didn't need to do that. Only 28,000. There we go. So now CL tax is the filtered version. Ooh, here we go. So even just printing that, we can see what our species names are. And I have a lot of hits to severe acute respiratory syndrome related coronavirus, a couple of uh, retroviruses, this Proteus virus, Isfahan, which is a bacteriophage of a common uh, non pathogenic bacterium. So let's, uh, there we go. All right, so we see the species. We also get um, our, the rest of our classification, super kingdom, phylum, class, order, family, and genus. Uh, so let's plot the families in ggplot and take a look at what prevailing pattern is. All right, cause this is only showing us the first few rows. Finally, visualize. So ggplot. CL tax plus geom bar AES. This will count it for us. X equals four cat in freak. So it sorts our counts of let's do the family column first. And we better go ahead and rotate those axis labels. There we go. So we've got a plot. And we slide it over. We can take a look. Uh, we get uh, most of our hits, uh, 11,000, no, just over 12,000 maybe, uh, to this uh, Sifoviridae family. Uh, and then about 10,000 hits to the Coronaviridae and a few thousand, 6,000 or so to the Retroviridae. And that's most of it. Uh, Sifoviridae is a bacteriophage group. So not a causative agent for a respiratory virus, but our second best hit here, Coronaviridae. There are lots of respiratory viruses in that clade. And uh, if I were doing this analysis on the unknown sample before we knew what the genome was, I would strongly suspect that is the cause. Uh, let's try the same thing, not genus, let's do species here. And we get a similar graph, uh, bigger labels. But we can see our Proteus virus, Isfahan, that bacteriophage, accounts for the first family. Uh, severe acute respiratory syndrome, so SARS-related coronavirus genome. OK, well, that's it. There we go. We have successfully used BLAST as to solve this metagenomic issue. We have identified a SARS-like virus in this raw data from a metatranscriptomic sample from an early patient in the COVID pandemic. And we uh, think we know what kinds of viruses are present in that individual. All right, thanks for watching as usual. Uh, we will follow this one up with a, a couple videos about some higher performance metagenomic classification tools like Kraken.